My name is Matt Cagle, and I'm an attorney with the ACLU of Northern California. Uh, could I do my rebuttal during my five minutes? <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Um, so I want to thank the City of Alameda and the City Council for hosting this public forum and for encouraging public debate on automated license plate readers before they're actually adopted and rolled out in Alameda. I, I want to make, I want to use my time in, in addition to my rebuttal to make two points. Uh, first, the reason, inside, the reason that's being cited in favor of the adoption of ALPR is precisely why it allows us to invade our privacy. Uh, ALPR is a very powerful force multiplier, and this enables law enforcement to piece together a detailed mosaic about uh, Alamedans and visitors to Alameda, their, public, their movements through public space. And these people often haven't engaged in any wrongdoing whatsoever. Um, the officers, and you and the, the, the gentleman from Nick Rick cited, you know, these instances where we've used uh, automated license plate readers to apprehend somebody who's been suspected of a crime. Well, that's a unique situation where that person is already being, has been sus suspected of a crime, and their license plate, the license plate associated with that person, has been placed in a hot list. So that's different than collecting everyone's information, which is how these ALPR devices are being rolled out. And second, my second point would be that Alameda's two page, it's just two pages, and it's about actually one and a half pages. Their draft policy on ALPR uh, places minimal constraints on the use of this technology and that it, we believe invites misuse of this technology. So first I'm going to turn to the capabilities of ALPR, which our other two presenters have already discussed somewhat. These high-speed cameras, they're capable of, con of recording thousands of images uh, per minute even, if there are that many cars driving by, which there usually aren't, but they're very capable of recording in very high succession and speed the picture of the license plate and attaching the location to that. Um, a single Alameda patrol car equipped with ALPR will be able to record the numbers and locations of thousands of plates per hour. Um, Alameda has a very small geographic footprint, as everyone here knows, and a very small population. And that, allow, that would allow one single ALPR unit to record uh, a single resident's data more than once if the system were operated over time. And we've seen this in Piedmont, another city that you've probably heard has adopted ALPR technology. That city has just under 11,000 residents, yet that city has retained over 3 million license plates. So it's, it's uh, safe to assume that those plates, individual residents, are likely to have appeared in that database more than once. And so you get pins on a map that place that citizen's movements around town. Um, ALPR will also allow Alameda to create a rich database of information about its residents. Without safeguards limiting the collection, use, and retention of this information, this database could be queried to learn whether a resident went from their home to a therapist or from a therapist to an abortion clinic, for instance. Of course, this technology has legitimate law enforcement uses, such as Amber Alerts or looking for felony warrants or stolen vehicles, which are some of the examples that have been cited already. Um, and you know, the ACLU recognizes that Alameda seeks ALPR only for its legitimate law enforcement uses. We do recognize that. Still, we want to highlight that without proper safeguards in place, this technology is just wide open for misuse and even abuse. Um, this technology is in its infancy right now, and it will advance, and Chief Rolleri will not always be the custodian of the technology here in the city, and so it's really necessary to place safeguards on the use of the, the technology that will be able to evolve as the technology gets even more effective, and will be able to um, you know, limit the abuse of discretion or misuse without intent to abuse. Um, as you know, staff changes in the, in the police department. So to move on to the current draft policy, as drafted, this draft policy fails to put the safeguards in place that I've been trying to articulate are necessary to control for the misuse of the technology. Um, if you have the, the policy or if you've looked at it, you'll notice that it directs officers to use ALPR in and around major incidents. Well, what is a major incident? The policy doesn't actually specify what a major incident is. A major incident could be a political protest. It could be your cars in the parking lot because you have chosen to attend a public forum on license plate reader technology. Um, the policy also requires the retention of data for one year, which uh, both speakers have already touched on. Um, I'll use part of my rebuttal time here. In fact, um, that law that says California government code, I believe it is, 
34090.6 has never been interpreted by a California court or a federal court to apply to automated license plate reader technology. And we would argue that routine video monitoring actually doesn't even encompass the use of a new sort of technology that is placed on a patrol car and that monitors every single resident whose plate drives by the camera. I believe routine video monitoring it's more reasonable to think that it actually is talking about the dashboard cams, for instance, that would be in patrol cars on the street. Um, and, and, and in addition, uh, you know, we just in 2012, there was a case called U.S. v. Jones. And in U.S. v. Jones, the Supreme Court looked at the use of a GPS tracker, which um, one of the speakers said, you know, that, that you would, we require a warrant based on probable cause for the use of a GPS tracker. Well, in that court, the law enforcement went to the court and said, we don't need this because they're moving through public spaces and there's no legitimate expectation of privacy in public space. And the Supreme Court said, you're wrong. You need to get a warrant here. And although they decided the case on a different set of grounds, there are five justices who agreed that our perception, as technology gets better and can co collect different pins on a map of where we've moved, those justices agreed that our constitutional law must evolve, and it is in the process of evolving right now. The constitutional law is unclear, and the courts are still grappling with this issue, and that is why it's even more necessary and essential that Alameda put good safeguards in place, because where there lacks clarity, misuse could happen. So that's part of my rebuttal, and I'll continue on quickly here. Um, the policy manual also allows um, data about Alameda residents to be shared with federal intelligence, and that would be NICRIC, the Northern California Regional Intelligence Center. As part of an agreement that Alameda is considering, but I don't believe has entered into with NICRIC, um, the agencies who are also, um, who have also signed a memoranda of understanding with NICRIC would, would provide Alameda with access to their own records. And this means that other law enforcement from other cities could query that database, and it looks kind of like Google Maps. You type in the license plate number, and it brings up pins on, pins on a map of, say, the Bay Area of where that car has been. Well, under this agreement, other cities' law enforcement would be able to do that to Alameda's residence plates that have been uploaded to the Regional Fusion Center database that was originally intended for, you know, creating better communication amongst law enforcement to prevent terrorism, but has somehow evolved into a database that would collect all records of your license plate and location regardless of whether you're suspected of terrorism. Um, and so finally, I, I just want to say, you know, thank you to Alameda for hosting this public debate and for the chief for being so open to sitting down with the ACLU and talking about these issues before Alameda's, you know, rushed forward with this sort of technology. And there are legitimate uses, but this policy manual falls far short of that and just really doesn't articulate, you know, the purposes that you, the community, would be seeking out these readers for in the first place, or the safeguards that should be placed on those purposes to make sure that they don't, that use doesn't step beyond that. And so, you know, before Alameda equipped, uh, or excuse me, before ALPR cars, you know, hit the streets, it's really important for this debate and this discussion to continue, for purposes to be articulated that say, this is why we need ALPR, and for those purposes to be articulated inside of a policy that really constrains the use of this technology. And if the city does decide, based on that discussion, that ALPR is necessary, then you adopt those safeguards and, and, and you ensure it's used only for those purposes that the city has decided is, are appropriate. So I mean, I think, and the ACLU thinks that Almeda has a great opportunity to be a model for this process of considering a new surveillance technology, regardless of whether you decide to adopt it or not. And um, yeah, we thank the city, the chief, and the council for allowing us to speak. And yeah, um, and we look forward to continuing this discussion. Thanks.